Hi everyone, I'm Nikki and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you my kindergartner's curriculum choices for next year. Now we are new to homeschooling. We just started in the middle of last year and this year was our first year for actually choosing curriculum choices. And it was so exciting and very intimidating and very daunting because there are hundreds of choices out there. So what do I know is gonna work best for my children? What helped me was going to a convention and flipping through all of just, you I mean anything and everything you could think of to find what I thought would work best for my my children. Um, and no two children are alike, so one curriculum choice might not work for for every child that you have. So I went and just picked out what I thought would work best, and I will let you know if it works or not. Um, we are using a lot of multi-sensory um, and unit study, Montessori-based, play-based type learning next year because in, for me, it was important for my kids to be kids this year and to play and to learn through experience and experiencing the world around them and you know, just getting in and using all of their senses. So we're gonna be doing a lot of that next year. I had explained the reasons why we were going to homeschool in the previous video for curriculum choices, but it was a little too long so YouTube would not upload it. If that's something you wanna see, I can definitely put that in a different video. Um, so just go ahead and like this video if that's something that you want to see. Um, and I also am going to be putting up a room tour here shortly, so go ahead and subscribe and if. If that's something that you want to see, I will get that up within the next couple weeks and explain how I will do unit studies and Montessori studies next year. So obviously I will not be able to give you a review of the different choices that we've made this year. Um, later in the year, I'll, I'll be able to come back and tell you what we think of each of the books. But um, let me just show you what we've chosen for next year. First is the Right Start Mathematics. We are going to be focusing on math, reading, and phonics this year. Um, that's our, our core focus. So we, the Right Start I'm really, 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 really excited about. And it uses this abacus um, to visualize numbers rather than counting. So they can, you know, with the blue and the yellow, they can look and say, okay, that's five, and then six, seven, rather than counting one, two, three, um, so this is um, very multi-sensory. It uses a lot of games, um, a lot of manipulatives, the abacus, a lot of interactions between um, me and my daughter, um, discussions, and so I'm really excited. And they also, which I believe will be more difficult for me than it will be my daughter, when like if instead of saying 36, they would say 3, 10, 6. Um, then that just helps with place value. So it's extremely intelligent on their end and maybe a little bit difficult on, you know, to, to get used to, but we're gonna give it a shot. It is all laid out. So you have, let's see if we can focus here. Um, it tells you exactly what to say and um, completely script it. So that's nice. But yeah, if you would like, I can show you the box of stuff that I got from Bright Start. Just tons and tons of stuff. And it also comes, you can get like a, a workbook. It's not heavily focused on handouts or worksheets. Um, but they do have some. And rather than get the book, I got the um, online program. That way I can use it with both my daughters rather than just one. So that's right start math. Then we're going to be using Explode the Code. Uh, I just bought this a little bit ago and my daughter's already um, started some works in it and she really seems to enjoy it. The pictures aren't very colorful but they're fun little little pictures and so it just, I'll show you a page that she's done. We're still working on, on the handwriting but she has to sound out the CBC word and then write it on the line. And she did those for this and really enjoyed it. So we're going to be doing Explode the Code next year. And my preschooler will be doing the Before Explode the Code. Um, so the beginning book. And then the 
reading. We're doing teach your child to read in 100 easy lessons. We started with Hooked on Phonics and she was bored with it. So we decided to do teach your child to read in 100 easy lessons. Um, and this book just uses unusual, um, let me see if I can find one, like unusual formation of letters to help them decode. So anything with a line over it would say E, say the name. Um, so that would be Eem. Um, so they start off just as basic as, find the starting page. <clears throat> just as as basic as learning individual letter sounds. And by the end of the book, they're reading paragraphs. So she enjoys it so far. She really seems to like the interactions that we have rather than the hooked on phonics where she felt like it was more just her. It overwhelmed her a little. This seems to be more up her, up her alley. So we're going to do that. And then these are the next two books we're going to do. Um, we're going to start with creating curriculum using children's picture books. And then we're going to work um, with five in a row after that. Now what this does is it gives you a list of books and then you work with one book for the entire week. Um, the first book is Bears. So it you read the book. It tells you... You know, what to discuss before, during, and after the story. And then it gives you a science, a language arts, math, problem solving, fine motor, arts, gross motor, creative dramatics, um, different lessons to go over throughout the week. And then it also has like little pictures and, and um, so this is like what happened next. And you do a work with this. So very hands-on. And we're going to be doing that. And then next we're going to be doing the five in a row. And the um, her husband, and I can't remember her name, but I saw him speak at the convention. And he was absolutely fabulous. Um, I left his class going, wow, like so inspired and so motivated. And I can do this. So I'm really ex start, excited to to work with this. And it has the same concept. It gives you a story to read. Um for five days and you do different lessons around that and it gives you like a science and a history and um, art, language arts, and it has different, if you can see, so there's social studies and there's a couple arts, but you can choose. So if you don't like one of the lessons that they have, you can use another one. So I'm really excited about that book. Um, so those books are going to be our main focus. And then these, we're going to do more unit studies. We're doing Adventures in America. And we have the student notebook, which is just sheets for the children to work on. Um, and then the actual book. This is also very multi-sensory. Again, most of the books that I got are. And this book, let's see, these are some of the um, topics. Pocahontas, Christopher Columbus, Sacagawea, the Oregon Trail, just all of things that we were going to hit on this year, um, but probably not as in-depth as this book goes. So we'll probably move this to first grade as well. Um, but it lays out day by day what you're supposed to do, what you're supposed to read, the different coloring activity, um, what you're supposed to do in your notebook. It gives you optional copy work and an activity. And then it gives you a little paragraph to read. Um, so that should be good. The Bible that we're going to use is the Jesus Storybook Bible. And I really like this. We had another one that I wasn't fond of. It was very... Um, every, every thing we read, I left going, ooh, they did not make God sound great in, in that reading. And this is very positive and gives details that the kids can understand, but it keeps it in, in a positive light. So I'm really excited about this one and cute, cute little drawings. Um, so we're going to hit on that. We also do the children's or I think it's the kids Bible, uh, an app on our phone that we use that's interactive. So you might want to look that up. And then I had posted, um, 
in my earlier video about the new free nutrition curriculum, this is just one portion of it. It's huge. I mean, we got so much stuff. And this just gives you different activities to go along with, with nutrition. Um, so, and then they have these emergent readers. We have dairy and fruit here, but it comes with all the food groups and they're just easy readers that have different sight words. So they've already kind of gotten into these and really like them. <clears throat> the next thing is the seven habits of happy kids. And um, this was so, you know, being able to homeschool allows me to be able to teach my kids morals and good habits and just being a good person. So I wanted to use this book. I've read great reviews on this book. And look at the little illustrations are absolutely adorable. And I think we'll read this and then do little activities around it. Um, so I'll let you know how that goes. And then we have beginning geography, which quite honestly looks super boring to me. <laughs> Uh, we'll probably do unit studies around these. I've read really good reviews on this book too. So maybe it's just that, you know, there's not a lot of color, which is fine because a lot of color doesn't make it a good book. Um, so we're going to give this a shot next year along with, um, we're going to be using the 50 States book and geography from A to Z. So we'll use those together. And then we have critical thinking books. And critical thinking and solving problem are so important to me. Um, and just in general, because they teach you those problem solving skills. They teach you independence and uh, you know just enhancing performance and thinking outside the box in general. So we got Mindbenders, which she started and she loves. Um, you just have to match, you know, read this and then figure out which goes with which. So she's done some of those, um, math analogies and Dr. Do riddles. And then our handwriting, which comment down below if you use a handwriting program. To me, it seems tedious and for me, I would rather focus on um, writing that serves a purpose rather than just writing to write but you know we're gonna give it a go and and see but let me know your ideas on that is it something that she's gonna be bored with or do you find use with this so there's that then we're going to do song school Latin um, we are going to use this but I think we're gonna focus on Spanish this year just because my daughter's so into it right now um, and it comes with a CD and you basically just, they give you words and different songs to learn the words. So that will be something that we may or may not focus on next year. And then all about spelling. We will finish or get into our reading more before we start all about spelling, but I did go ahead and buy it just in case we started it earlier than I expect it. Um, very multi-sensory as well, step-by-step -step lesson plans. So um, I only got the books. I did not get everything else to go with it because I feel like we have a lot of the stuff at home that we can use rather than buying it. It might be something that you want to look into and buy and we might end up purchasing, but for now we just got the books. Um, and then just in case, you know, we're out and can't do all of that, we did get the Abeka letters and sounds and number skills. They are inexpensive and bright and colorful and my daughter loves doing them. We're working on these this summer. So if we are in a rush, we will focus on, on these this year. And also um, a couple online programs that are free. Progressive Phonics is a great free program. Um, and Mr. Q Science, Mr. Q, just the letter Q, he has um, a couple free science programs that are excellent that we'll be using. Um, but I think that's it. If you have any questions, let me know and I'm happy to go into further detail, but I wanted to make this short so that YouTube would let me upload it. Um, I will talk to you in a future video and good luck with your planning.